No, no. Get up here. <gasps> Good boy. Good boy, Pedro. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's see if we can do this. It's a lot. It's a lot to ask of you. First time in the studio. No, no. Okay, just lay down. Hi, whiners. It's me, Pete. And Pedro. Okay, all right. Let, we're going to see if... No, 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 no. We're going to see if it works. We're going to see if it works, but we need you to chill, okay? No, 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 no. I need you to... I need you to lay down. Shh, shh, shh. Be a good boy. <gasps> be a good boy. Wouldn't that be fun if you were just a good boy? Huh? Wouldn't it be great? People would be so excited. It would be amazing. Yeah. So just lay down. Lay down. Nope. Let's try that again. <laughs> Y'all, Pedro would not cooperate. So instead of getting frustrated and a little crazy and a little angry, I just chose not to record. Like he had already been too, doing too much. And I was like, I now he's going to be riled up. So if I put him in his crate, he's going to be giving me anxiety because he's going to be, you know, annoyed. He's going to know that I'm up to something. Right. But right now. He's in his crate. He doesn't know that I'm doing something without him. He doesn't have any FOMO. So welcome back. Happy Thirsty Thursday. Oh, I feel like it's been a minute since I've done a solo episode. So much has happened. Biggest thing probably was like the tornado that went through Houston, but I'm not going to really get into that. But like just for the record, we did have one. Um, they What are they calling it? Like derecho, um, whatever. That means like straight wind. But there was also some fucking round wind, whatever you want to call it, some tunneled wind, some tornado wind. Um, I was out of power for like three or four days. The area that I live in got it pretty bad, but... I'm alive. I'm well, like not bitching about it. Pretty scary because I was supposed to be out on a run or on like my 20, 20 minutes of body movement. And uh, I looked out the like went to go walked out the door and then I was like, it just looks weird. And here I was on the phone with my sister and she's like, maybe it's just like a stretch day. I was like, yeah, maybe. And then I got the tornado warning. And then I got the text message from my friend saying tornado is coming to you. And I was like, wait, there's really one coming? Because like, I just didn't take it seriously because Houston can't ever be right about the weather. And it just changes on a dime. So then anyway, I hid in my bathtub or, you know, took shelter in my bathtub, which I don't I don't know. I didn't know if that was the right thing to do or not, but we did it. Um. Yeah, it was annoying. It, I was really just annoyed. So like my life is fine, but it was just a little annoying is what I'm is what I'm trying to say. Um, but I do know people where like their house has got fucked up. Like holes, trees in their house, like have to move out of their house type shit. So pretty wild. So that's number one. Number two is speaking of a dog, I got one. <laughs> Let me give you the backstory there. Well, it all helped. It all happened in Mexico, which is why his name is Pedro. Like the idea of Pedro was born to me in Mexico. So he's a Mexican man. And I like an old dog or an old person's name or like a man's name for a dog. Like my dog back home is named Walter. I love like a George. Um, recently I heard someone calling after their dog named Kevin and I thought that was weird, but like you do you. Um, but yeah, so Pedro was born in Mexico, not a street dog from Mexico. I didn't get a street dog from Mexico, which bless their souls. I would love to. Um, anyway, so yeah, I was just lounging by the pool in Mexico, saw someone reshare a reel of this dog that was going to about to be euthanized. So this was the first day of vacation Thursday, like, I don't know, four or 5 PM. The dog was set to be euthanized Friday at one. I think just because of overcrowding in the shelter, I'm not sure it was a volunteer that posted about Pedro and I, or about his name was Flynn at the shelter. And I was like, Oh my God, for some reason, like, do I need him? Like he looks like a bit of me. Um, I don't know. I just like kind of instantly was connected to him, which is like, I'm not 
not, not, not a dog person. I'm not. I don't like the hair. I don't like the slobber. They're so time consuming. Like they are an extra human or not a human, but they're an extra thing you're paying for, like monthly bills. God forbid something happens or you got to go to the vet. Like those have, these have just been my thoughts my whole life. However, I am a pit bull lover. Like if I see a pit bull out on the street when I'm walking, I'm like, good to baby. But if I see another dog, I'm like, good for you, not for me. Like, I don't love the look of those dogs. But like also I do I do become just for the record, I do become connected to other people's dogs that I know, like friends of mine or other family members who have dogs that like aren't my favorite. Like I do become kind of connected to them. I don't hate them. Anyway, so I saw this dog's post and I was like, oh my gosh, should I? Can I? Will I? And I was in Mexico with my friend Kiana and she was just kind of like totally I mean that's a personal decision you know and so I started calling a couple of my friends and my sisters and they were like I mean that's like a whole life change and like you've never really like you're just really busy like you not not only like do you talk about you being busy all the time but like you've got a lot going on like is now the time and I was like now is kind of the time because I had like double booked podcast guests in May so I could have some time in June to prepare for the announcement that I'm going to be sharing in a few moments. Um, So I was like, it's kind of like the only time that I can get a dog, which is like such an unpredictable thing because I don't have any podcast guests coming over. So like this is kind of the time right now. Like, and I don't know how it's, why it's working like this, but like maybe I should. And so I reached out to the the person, the volunteer. And I said, has, you know, Flynn been saved or like scooped up yet? And she's like, no. Um, and so I went ahead and, um, I went ahead and applied and it's a very, I just didn't know that there was so much that goes into it. So basically like the shelter bark shelter out here in Houston couldn't get rid of the dog unless there was like a a for sure person who was going to take the dog. So that had to be either like me, but I was out of town or a rescue. So the rescue tagged the dog. I guess that's the term. Um, I think it's a rescue out of like North Carolina. So they tagged the dog saying like, Hey, we, we're going to take this dog. We're capable people. We have a foster lined up, but you know, she's out of town for a couple days kind of thing. I think that's how it works. So I had to go through like, um, I had to fill out this whole application and go through a little bit of like an interview process. And I mean, I just like basically like poor, poor my friend Kiana the whole time. I was just like, I mean, I'm just like waiting on pins and needles. This application that I had was like so long to fill out. Like I was just doing this at dinner with her and I'm like, I'm so sorry. She's like, no, like, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Like, it's just got to get your dog, you know? So I got approved and my intention is to foster him or I'm sorry, I'm fostering him with the intention of adopting him. So like they were like, hey, if you're just going to foster, like no worries, but we'll kind of wait a little bit to see if anyone else has like more serious interest because fostering and rehoming and fostering and rehoming like we don't want him to end up back on the you know a shelter list and I was like no totally get it I was like I'm I'm not saying I would never foster a dog to foster but like I I'm fostering with the intention to adopt so as long as he's like trainable coachable he's not aggressive towards people or aggressive towards dogs like I would most likely want to have him as mine so the shelter ended up neutering him and then there was like a temporary foster that took him for one night that night of the neutering um and then i got off the plane sunday went and bought a crate for the dog and went to the temporary foster her name is steph to pick up the dog and he was so sweet just tail wagging and she has two dogs and so i like obviously it's just okay great he already likes dogs like this is lovely so just good signs all around Um, So basically, that's the story of Flynn slash Pedro. Um, And gosh, we've been together. We've been going together for like two and a half weeks at this point. (laughs) And you guys, he's really just a good boy. He must have had some house training or some sort of family life before he was a stray. So his paperwork says he was a stray. And it says like, I guess on upon intake, the reason or the call or again, I'm not totally sure what all the terminology is, but basically the first 
interaction they had with Flynn slash Pedro was that he – it was a stray dog preventing mail from being delivered at a home. So I guess – I don't know. That just – to me that just means like stray dog like probably barking at the mailman or whatever and like the homeowners are like that we need – like – call the shelter, call someone because this stray dog is like, won't leave us, won't leave our home, and then we're not getting our mail. So come help us. So that's what I think happened. Um, But anyway, he just like, he's just, he catches on quickly. I've taught him, and maybe this is stuff that he already like knew, but like, or retaught him. So I've taught him sit, wait, he's learning lay down, we're learning place. Um, Don't get me wrong, like he's a polar on a leash like he pulls he's so excited to see other dogs that he gets up on his hind legs he's like a hopper um and you know people might take that as aggressive but it's not it's just like he's really wants to play so i just haven't i'll probably have to like get him official training um which i would definitely do pending i'm keeping him which like obviously i am i just haven't officially said that yet to the to the rescue um but yeah, he's just a good boy. So he pulls on the leash. He does not let me eat. So I've been putting him in the crate while I eat or standing while eating. <laughs> and he's not even whining. He's just like around, like excited, like jumping on me kind of stuff. So um, what else? He's just he's just a snuggly little buggly uh, we had to wait two weeks after his surgery to get him bathed. And he was just dirty from the shelter. Like you could just see the dirt on him and smell him. And so I was really like, I just, as I mentioned, I don't like dog hair. I don't like dirt. I like my things a certain way. And so I was like, really just like probably not like giving him too many lovey snuggles. Like definitely not on my face. Like, I don't know. I was just grossed out. So anyway, I finally got him groomed. And had a good bath for him. And he's just so clean and so sweet. Um, He's, like, not food aggressive. I mean, do you guys care? I'm just going on and on about this dog that I have now. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, I think that's all about Pedro. I just did not know. Until I had a dog, I did not know that I had so many neighbors. You know what I mean? Like, I am just seeing so many humans out there. I didn't know um, we have some possums in my neighborhood. I didn't know... We had some frogs at nighttime. Um, I, on my walk today, well, actually, I've I've started running with him. So on my run with him today, I saw a bird drop dead from the power line. Like, drop dead, plain sight. And, you know, it's just like things like that. You just aren't – it's just new. It's just new for me. Um, also, I took Pedro out to go on a little afternoon bathroom break. By the way, this dog goes to the bathroom – Number two, at least three times a day. And it's great. It's a good thing. But (laughs) I feel like that's a lot for a dog. Like, I only feed him twice a day and he gets treats throughout the day. I don't know. Anyway, so I went to take him out for his afternoon potty break. And as I'm exiting my apartment, and by the way, I have a witness to this. My downstairs neighbor was out there. She came up to the situation, so she saw it all because this is just, like, another one of those things, like, how did this happen to you? Like, all of a sudden, you're a dog mom, and now you just run into dogs everywhere? Okay, so anyway, I exited my apartment to take Pedro on a walkie walk, and um, he kind of, like, paused a little bit at first. I looked to my left to this alleyway coming, like, where my car is parked and where other people drive through. And there's two dogs that just, like, arise out of thin air, no owner, no adult, unsupervised, unleashed. And they kind of were, like, in – I think they were in the middle of a step. And so, like, when we noticed them, Pedro and I, they, like, stopped taking a step. It was so creepy. (laughs) And then I was like, uh – like, my heart just froze because Pedro's on a leash. He likes dogs, but, like, does he like dogs that are unleashed? Does he like all dogs? I don't know. I'm still figuring out this damn dog. So these two dogs that are unleashed start like just just walking so slowly and creepily over to us. And I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God, I can't freak out. I don't want to freak out because I don't want Pedro to become protective. I don't want him to freak out, him to feel like he's unsafe or that I'm unsafe. So I tried to like 
kind of like as I would normally on a walk, like, okay, come with me. And he wouldn't. He was dead set on these dogs that were just like slowly creepily walking over to Pedro. And I um and so <laughs> uh they got over to us and then like started booty sniffing and then I saw my neighbor turn the corner. I'm like waving at her with my one hand. I'm like pointing like basically making you know motions that like who are, whose dogs are these oh my god help me kind of thing but like I didn't want to scream or shriek and so anyway there's just like doing some like booty smelling and like quiet it was interesting because Pedro's typically a little bit more excited to see dogs and he didn't seem excited he just seemed like all right I'm gonna just like chill kind of thing so that was good but anyway so I was like okay I don't want to pull Pedro away these dogs are not on a leash. Like, I don't want, we're right by the street. I don't want them to go out in the street. So they kind of broke up, like, stopped smelling each other. And then I, I mean, my heart was pounding because I thought to myself, this is when I knew I'm adopting Pedro for sure. Like, I keep saying I'm 99% adopting him. I'm 99% going to be his mom. But like, in this moment, when these dogs were coming up to me and they were smelling, and I was like, okay, if shit goes wrong, how do I, how do I save Pedro? Like, will will this German Shepherd accept my body as tribute? You know what I mean? Like, it was a German Shepherd and, like, a white, small, fluffy dog. I was like, how will I – should I let go of the Pedro's leash and have him start – like, he can just go live a better life without me and I'll just die here. <laughs> Those were the thoughts that went through my head. So that's when I officially decided I'm a mother. I am a mother now. I have to email the rescue and let them know that. Anyway, so as soon as they broke up and, like, kind of created, like, six inches of space, I kind of, like, pulled pre- pulled Pedro pretty, like, swiftly. And I was like, okay, we're going back up, even though he hadn't had a chance to go, to go to the bathroom. So I went up, put him back in my apartment, ran down. The dog was across the street. So I, like, was able to coerce him over, leash him, picked up the other dog, and kind of, like, went back towards the alleyway to where they came from and hopefully – hoping that they were one of – you know, they just came from, like, maybe the – a back door was open or something. Um, and uh, they kind of led me op- to this garage and then right up to this garage door. So I just knocked on the door and someone answered. And I was like, hi, are these your dogs? And she's like, oh, my God, bless your heart. Thank you so much. I didn't even know they were gone. And I was like, OK, thanks. And she like took the dog inside. I was like, wait, my leash. She's like, oh, no, this is I'm like, no, your dog didn't have a leash. That's my leash. Um, anyway. So it's just like life's been a bit bit of a whirlwind. So we're just adjusting. We're just adjusting to new, new things, new ways of life. Like I'm, I'm really very hairy most of the time. (laughs) Um, I have lint rollers everywhere. So now I carry extra hoops, extra sunglasses, extra lint rollers, and extra bug spray in my car and in all spare areas it's like where's my chapstick where's my chapstick like where's my lint roller where's my bug spray where's my dog treats like who who have i become (laughs) who have i become oh my god what a mess so yeah that's pedro welcome him he's the official pod dog so yeah i tried to start as you saw at the beginning of this episode unless i cut that part out so maybe you don't see you're here um i tried to record an episode with him yesterday because he's the official pod dog and he just wasn't he just wasn't calming down and i need him to be calm um so he's three years old he's like 40 pounds he's a pit bull if you haven't seen any photos or videos on my instagram mostly i'm posting him on my personal instagram because he's just like my child um so yeah am i forgetting anything about pedro i don't think so he's got lots of people i'm forgetting i got so overwhelmed when i first got him because like i said it's just it's just like changing my whole life like i had to move my whole cocktail table and and bar stools out of my living room like his crate is so big and then he's got a dog bed and he's got toys and it was it was a lot okay for somebody who likes things neat and clean and tidy and not cluttered it was a lot and then on top of that the girl caitlin who was the volunteer who posted flynn slash pedro's video even in the first place to get him saved made a wish list for him so then she asked for my address and he put my address onto amazon you know like blinded and then 
he apparently went viral during the time of her trying to save him. And so Pedro has a legit fan club. I was getting multiple boxes every day. I actually did an unboxing video with Pedro. I haven't even like done it yet or like broken it down to make it a reel yet. But um, it was a lot. So <laughs> I'm very thankful, very, like so sweet. And I'm a new dog mom in general. Like I've always been a dog aunt, not a dog mom. So like I needed the advice on what to get um, and like things to start with. So it's very appreciated and like appreciative, appreciated, very appreciated. I'm very appreciative, or it was very appreciated. We always get there. You know what I mean? We, and by we, I mean me talking to a camera alone by myself in this room. We always get there. Um. So anyway, I'm, I am thinking, like, should I put, should I make a Venmo <laughs> for Pedro for his training that he'll need and any potential future vet bills because he has a fan club and he's getting more things than I've ever received from my followers and listeners. Um, besides the love that I get from you guys, like that's priceless. You know that. So that was that. So basically moral of the story is if you don't think you're ready for a dog, you might be ready for a dog. You might need a dog in your life and maybe you could save a dog and rescue a dog. Like I did with Pedro. He doesn't even know he was about to be dead. Terrible. And now he's living his best life in a 720 foot square apartment in his crate for off and on four hours a day while I work. <laughs> but he thinks it's the best. He doesn't know how good he has it. You know what I mean? So that's that on that. Oh, yes, I was in Mexico. So treated myself to a trip to Mexico because why not? I was planning on going by myself. Um, I had kind of said it like I wanted to do it after my photo shoot because I've just been like really kicking ass and taking names. And so I wanted to reward myself for my good behavior and go get a tan, get on a plane, go relax, go read books, like drink rosé. And that's exactly what I did. So my friend Kiana was saying she was also going to go do something like that, too. So then we just went together and it was perfect. It was really, really nice. Like, I've only known Kiana a year, year and a half and like kind of nice to just go with somebody who like doesn't know you for like 20 years. I don't know. It was just like the first time I've done a trip with not that you're random, Kiana. I know you're listening to this. You're not. But like someone I don't know. She's just like not somebody who I've known that long. And it was just like kind of random and she's like okay like are we gonna share rooms and I was like oh yeah we're showering and shitting in the same room bitch like you're gonna learn a lot about me okay can't wait let's go <laughs> um and we did and it was great and it, we just traveled so well together and just did what we wanted to do just hung out I got so burned the first day um which is I mean I believe it. It's just annoying because I put on a lot of sunscreen. And so the whole second day, I couldn't even be out in the sun at all, which it was fine. I still laid out in a beach chair, like under an umbrella and read two whole books. So it was fine. Did come back with a tan and I just came back feeling refreshed, rejuvenated. Um, we stayed in an all-inclusive and it was cool. Like I, I'm not it depends on what kind of trip I'm taking. Like, it was cheap enough. It, it was what it was. You get what you pay for. Food is fine. I mean, like, honestly, I fuck with a breakfast buffet. I fuck with the food by the pool. Like, I'm down with that. It's the dinners that aren't really that great at, like, a medium-priced um, all-inclusive resort. And so, uh, yeah, that's where we're at. There. And they always do those cheesy, like, trivias at the pool or, like, water water synchronized dancers and so or swimmers and you know so that's the type of resort we were at but it was so 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 good so needed and i'm probably gonna take another one take another trip of a similar sort in a couple months because why not okay without further ado what else do I want to say before I tell you what the news is? I just really don't have that much to report. Like, I think because of this thing I'm about to announce, I've been working like undercover for it, like silently where I'm very out loud usually and like sh oversharing a lot of my stories um, and on, on Instagram posts and stuff. Like, 
I just haven't had the chance because I this the, I wanted to have the majority of this event planned before I announced it. And so it feels like I've been a little absent or something. Like, I don't know. Like, oh, I've just been really like uh, being involved with my friends a lot lately in the past few weeks, like, um, which has been nice and good and needed. And um, we've just all been rallying for for one of us um, that needed us. And so that's where a lot of my time um, or my my energy, my thoughts have gone probably. Um, hmm. I don't have any updates on the dating world, which is totally good. Ha- like no problems there. I'm like happy about it <coughs> and just haven't wouldn't have the time to meet somebody new, as I say. Um, but if I know you in person, you can definitely ask to take me out on a date. But I just I'm not on the apps. So, OK, I'm nervous. I'm I'm um, prolonging the announcement because what are the words even like? <laughs> what are the words I even say to say what I need to say? Say what you need to say. Say what you need to say. Um, I'm. I'm. <laughs> Okay, by the time this episode is out, which is Thursday, June 13th, I am announcing that I'm putting on a live podcast show. (laughs) What? Oh my God. Okay, I got the words out. I'm putting on a live podcast show, Adultish Wines, first ever live podcast show. We're celebrating, or me, I'm celebrating my 100th episode. (laughs) Let that sit in. Let that set in. Let that set in. Let it set in. See, we got there. Um, Let that set in because I think the average of people who like start a podcast and quit is like, 20 episodes or something and I'm not gonna cry but I'm I'm celebrating 100 episodes July 25th well actually the 100th episode is gonna be August um August 8th but I'm the party is July 25th and it will be so live podcast show I'm all over the place but deal with it (laughs) deal with it August 8th is going to be 100 episodes of Adultish Wines. I'm throwing the party July 25th. It's live. It's in Houston, Texas. Tickets are on sale now at Eventbrite, um, and it's linked in my bio. There's some pre-sale tickets, pre-sale VIP tickets where you get um, guaranteed a gift bag and preferred seating. And there's only a certain amount of those and a certain amount of pre-sale price tickets, and then it goes up. Because, honey, it's going to be a party. It's an event. Like things are going on, things are happening and they have to be paid for. (laughs) So yes, you are paying for your tickets. Um, The guests I have, I have Carolina Fox, wink, wink, Carolina Sanchez, host of the Nightcap, Telly Award winner, mom, wife, daughter. Obviously, I've had her on the podcast two or three times. I've been on the Nightcap many times. Love her. Down ass, bad ass chick. Can't wait. Um, Having Chris Young, CY, as I know him. He is um former Major League Baseball player and current sports broadcaster for MLB Network. He's also one of my best friend's husbands. So he's he's in on the shit. You know what I mean? Like he knows a bit about me. And um, it's going to be good, good dialogue there. Um, Then Dr. Viviana. Dr. Viviana, who's a relationship and sex therapist, licensed re- relationship and sex therapist, I should say. Um, she was on s- s- how many seasons? I think season seven through 14 or nine, a few seasons. Um, she was an intimacy expert on Married at First Sight. Um, she has a practice here in Houston. She's a down ass bitch, too. I mean, I know she doesn't cuss. Sorry, Dr. Dr. V. But um love always love having her on the pod and um her her advice and her takes on things and then phil simmons which is weird i've never said his last name i didn't even know it was that i had to like look it up but phil (laughs) phil from the poor horseman podcast who is come on i mean 
it's just going to be absolute cackling. So I'm so excited. Oh, my God. Everything is just like falling into place. The things that needed to be finalized before announcing were literally finalized the day before the announcement was scheduled to go out, which is June 13th because it's June 12th right now. Like it's just been. I'm so I'm the event hasn't happened, but I already know it's going to be a fucking amazing event. I'm so thrilled. I'm so proud of myself. I cannot wait. So that's the big announcement. That's what I've been posting all the save the dates for on Instagram a live show. Like, who do I think I am? I had this idea in April. Like, I feel like I do my best thinking when I'm brushing my teeth, when I'm driving, or when I'm about to fall asleep. And so I was thinking of this photo shoot that I did about a month ago um, as I was, like, passing out going to sleep. And I was like, I should really take advantage of this photo shoot, you know, make sure to get some, like, good headshot style photos and da-da-da. And I was like, "Um, I should really do, like, my 100th episode is going to be coming up. Like, I should... um, make sure to get some content for that. Like I'll get some hundred balloons and post it, you know, when the hundred episode comes out and I was like, or I can do a live show. Wow. A small little seedling of an idea has grown quite a lot. Let me tell you. (laughs) And I'm just like a whole ass event planner. I'm just a whole ass podcaster, just a whole ass. I'm just a whole ass. I'm a whole ass. I have a whole ass. That too. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, okay, July 25th, doors open at 530. It's going to be like an hour, hour and a half of cocktail hour. There's going to be merch available. I'm not wearing it. I'm actually getting it dropped off tonight. <laughs> merch available for sale. Um, there's going to be hats, hoodies, sweatpants hopefully t-shirt crop tops um and then i'm having um traveling spirit bars bartending so there will be drinks available um and what else um a couple other brands are sending some things in for the gift bags the swag bags that come with the pre-sale vip and if i have any left over like more people will be getting them but like guaranteed the pre-sale vip people get the gift bag and like so far it's good stuff like, I wish I could do all 100, 150. Um, I'm like, are, are 100 people going to buy a ticket? I don't know. Um, anyway, the place fits that much. So that's why I'm saying that. Um, okay. So, yeah, a plant project might be involved. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm just now I'm now I'm rambling and all those things can come out with time. But, yeah, there's no more secrets. So as brands start to announce they want to be involved or work with me, like I'll be letting you all know who's going to be there. So, yeah. Oh, that's what I was saying. So 530 to like 645 is like uh, doors open, cocktail hour, shop around, get some drinks, um, get some merch, go to the different tables, you know, of, of brands that are there, businesses that are there. And then the show will be from 7 to 830. Um, and again, that's with Carolina Sanchez, Dr. Viviana Coles, Chris Young, and Phil Simmons. Um, and of course, I'm your host. Um, we're going to be talking shit. We're going to be talking shit. We're going to be laughing. Um, probably some embarrassing stories, some funny stories, probably some advice in there. Just like having a go at each other, really. Um, and uh, yeah, and then 8.30 to 10 is going to be like an after party because I am going to be around during the cocktail hour, but like can't imagine I'm going to be able to enjoy myself when I'm stressed about the show that I'm going to have to put on. Um, did I mention it's like live and it's in front of, you know, people like I what? Like I'm in my room right now with a camera that I can edit and like it just I'm scared. I'm scared, but I'm not. Like, I feel comfortable, but I'm nervous. It's just a new thing. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Um, That's it. That's that's the news. What the fuck? So, get your tickets. There are limited seating. Like, I mean, I'm not saying it's going to sell out, but, like, the venue does only have a certain capacity for seating. Um, So, there are limited seats available. So, Tell your husband, tell your wife, tell your kids. What is it? Hide your wife, hide your, what is that? Hide your kid. So hide your kids, hide your wife. So tell your family, tell your friends, get a group of people. Come, drinks provided. Like, 
valet provided. It's going to be a fun night out. Dress to impress. Um, it's in Houston, Texas, if I didn't say that already. The link will, of course, be in the show notes, but you can also go to my Instagram profile at Adultish Wines, A D U L T I S H W H I N E S. That was kind of nice. That was kind of nice. Um, and it'll be available at the link in my bio there. Ha! <sighs> wow, I did it. Now let's um let's talk again after that show goes. <laughs> let's come back and revisit if it was successful or if it was not. I'm sure it's going to be successful. Like I believe in myself. It's just like with me there is something that always happens. Like I just told you about those two unleashed dogs coming out of the abyss. Like could be anything with me, you know? So prepare yourself. You're not going to want to miss it. Um and yeah, props to me for a hundred fucking episodes. How about that? How about that? I think that's all the time I have I have for today. <laughs> Why does that sound so professional? I think that's all the I think that's all the time I have for today. Um so my wine of the week. <sighs> I, I didn't even really think about this. Like I could list off a million. So it's, um you know, dogs getting out of their house, like owners. Oh, it's it's people. I know what it is. Well, one is a really silly one, but it's um yesterday when I was curling my eyelashes, I completely pinched my whole eyelid. Like thought my eyelid was going to come with the curler off of my face. Like it was that bad. I'm fine. I survived. Um, but my real wine of the week is people looking at my dog, my D-A-W-G. You won't catch me spelling it D-O-G because he's my dog. Like he's the one in the wrong. Like he's aggressive because he's a pit bull. Don't start that with me. Because no shade to your um, small dogs, but they're not called ankle biters for nothing. Okay. So watch your dog and I'll watch mine. Keep your dog leashed and I'll keep mine leashed. That's it. That's that's how you that's the the solution to the problem. So don't be judging my dog. That's my dog. You know what I'm saying? That's my wine of the week. Um okay, that really is all the time I have for because I'm going to wear a run club tonight. <laughs> Um, I did already run this morning, and so, like, who am I doing two in one day? I think I'm going to bring Pedro, which will be interesting because um, I think there's going to be a bunch of people there and possibly other dogs, and, like, he's still just getting acquainted. But, anywho, I love y'all. I'll see you next Thursday for sure, but hopefully I'll see you July 25th in Houston, Texas at Adultish Wines first ever live podcast show be there or be jealous because it's gonna be a fun time love you see you later ah